Uh, now, we're going to play a game. It's called State Your Take. I'm going to uh-huh. put these guys on the spot. I'm going to make them have hot takes. Uh, we got four questions here. You guys are going to have a minute apiece to answer. Uh, we're going to start with this. Prom, I'm going to you first on this one. Who is the coach in college basketball that has the most to prove in March this year? Um, first of all, you know, it's obviously a blessing to play in March, but if I had to pick one, <laughs> there you know, goes with the coach. No, 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 no. There goes with yeah. the coach speaking if, <laughs> if I had to pick one, um, and he's had a heck of a year battling COVID. I like his team a lot, but Kevin Willard, uh, you know, Seton Hall, he's been there, you know, really four times straight to the NCAA tournament, the COVID year, take that out. Um, but hasn't, you know, only one time has moved past that second round to the second round. And, uh, you know, not to the Sweet 16 yet, but he's got a team capable when they're healthy and together. Uh, he's done a phenomenal job at Seton Hall, but he's one that I would say, hey, you know, to move the, you know, move the needle in March, he'd be one I would pick. RC? I'm going to give you one. <clears throat> I'm going to go with Gonzaga. I, 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 and I say it because if you're talking about a team that lost in the finals, if there ever was going to be a year that they're going to win it, it's this year. They have it all. They are as complete of a team that we know in this league. And the only way you're going to beat them is, is slow it down, you know, not let them get out and run. But still, I, I think that surprises them a little bit. I think the St. Murray's loss motivates them and gets them kind of dialed back in, or, you know, gets, gets their attention. But few needs this. You know, I, I don't know if he's going to have a better team than he has right now going forward. And, and I, I think they're favorite and they're favorite for a reason. I think they have all the pressure in the sense in the world that they need to finish. Not, not just win. They're going to win. They're going to be successful. But if he's ever going to win a national championship, this is the year. Yeah. I mean, they, you're the best to never do it until you're the guy that does it. Right. Um, right. I'm going to go. I'm going to take a little bit of a different <laughs> angle on this. And I'm going to say Ed Cooley. Right. Ed Cooley has not. He's he's done a great job developing this Providence team to the point where they won their first Big East regular season title in the history of Providence basketball. That's 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 impressive. He's going to win Big East Coach of the Year. He's going to be in the mix for National Coach of the Year. He hasn't had all that much success in March either, guys. And if he's going to do it, this is the team that is built to be able to go out and win close games. Uh, what do they say about March? It's survive and advance, right? Well, his team has been surviving and advancing for the last two months. Nobody is more prepared for this. Go out and prove it in March. I want to see him get it done. I would love nothing more than to see Ed Cooley find a way to make it to the Final Four, mostly because there may not be a more quotable human being on the planet than, uh, <laughs> than Ed Cooley when he's in a good mood. All right, you guys ready for question number two? RC, you're getting this one first. What is the one matchup that you need to see happen at some point during the month of March? I want to see Arizona. And again, I want to see Arizona and Gonzaga. I think they're the two best teams in college basketball right now. And, and, and that's the matchup I want to see. I, I, I think of, I, I think we'll get the, I don't want to take you guys answer. So I was going to say SEC matchup that we've discussed in the past, but if I had to pick two teams now that I believe talent wise, and I think Arizona's playing as well as anyone else, I would love to see at some point in the final four or earlier seeing Gonzaga and, and, and Arizona play. Mm-hmm. Pro, I was close to putting that down. I had Arizona and Gonzaga. I was close. I was close, to but I want to see Arizona and the only, and but I went different. I want Arizona and Baylor, um, uh, and give you know if you know Baylor's the defending national champions. They've handled all the adversity this year. Incredible. Thomas played his best basketball last weekend against Kansas at home. Uh, hopefully LJ Cryer can get healthy. You know, they've changed style of play a little bit. They'll play five guards. They'll play small ball with four guards and Thamba, you know, but they're the national champs till they get beat. And I think Arizona's playing as good as anybody in the country. So Arizona, Baylor, a little bit of contrast in styles because that Baylor defense, if they can get Arizona in half court, will be will be tough to deal with. They call that the James Akinjo revenge game, bro. Oh, and I didn't even think it, about it, that. That's it, right. It, it, Akinjo, <laughs> you know. Has There's a good narrative for you. Here's, yep. here's what I want to see. This is this is what I'm hoping for, right? The one of one of the ones that I was going to go with was uh, Gonzaga, Arizona in the title game. Mark Few, Tommy Lloyd, that whole that whole yeah. narrative, right? I got one better for you. National title game, Coach K, last game he's ever going to coach, going up against John Calipari 
and the Kentucky Wildcats with the national championship on the line. How good would that be? How good would that be? Yeah. You got the two biggest names in the sport, the two biggest brands in the sport, the single biggest storyline that's going to completely overshadow everything else in this tournament, and the guy that is the perfect arch villain to spoil a moment like that. It would be too good. Too good not to happen. If if the NCAA tournament was uh, rigged the way that the NBA playoffs are, then we know that that would be what the national title game is. Um, all right, uh, Pro, I'm going to you on this. Give me a player that can pull a Shabazz or a Kemba Walker and throw the team on his back, carry them to a national title. Man, when you asked that question, I wrote down several guys. Um, but I'm going to huh? I, I did. I mean, I, I've got five down here. And I and I could say either one of pick them. Pick one. And, pick one. You got to pick one. Got to. I'm going to go one. Drew Drew Timmy, Drew okay. Timmy. You know, I think he's older. He's experienced. He's been through it. He understands the pain of the national championship loss, and he can really, really score that ball around the block. And Gonzaga does a great job getting to it. So I'm going to go Drew Timmy. RC, what do you got? Johnny Davis. I'm going with Johnny Davis. I I, I I've just been so impressed with him, even when he came out the gates early this year. I was like, ah, I don't know if he got another guy that he can depend on. It doesn't matter. He has carried these guys. He's put them on his back. You know you, he, you got to stop him. You can't stop him. He's my player of the year, you know, and, and, and I think he's the guy that's capable of going on one of those Kimball Walker-type runs. All right. I am going to go with J.D. Note from Arkansas. I just feel like mm. he, with the way that they defend and the way that Muss – kind of runs his offense. He just goes and finds a mismatch and gives it to one guy and lets him go win. We just saw him go for 30 and eight against uh, against this Kentucky team um, over the weekend. So I think that he's the kind of guy that can go out and take, uh, take a game over, win a game all by himself. Um, all right, last one I got for you guys. The player that you think can pull a Dante DiVincenzo, meaning they can go from not really in the NBA draft picture to being a projected lottery pick with a big NCAA tournament run. RC, I'm going to you first. Ooh. I, that is a tough one. I'm a, I, I don't know who that guy would be. All right, let's go pro while you No, no, I, I go, I go I, I, Alondis Williams. Alon, okay, there you go. That's a good one. I think Alondis like Williams. It. I think Alondis Williams is a guy that can go on a run here that would elevate himself. You know, he would if be he gets guy. hot, if he if he goes like six for nine in in a couple of these NCAA tournament games, because that's the question we talked about this. Yeah, can he be a great shooter? Pro, who do you have? Uh, I did have Alondis down in my to pick from, but I would go Christian Braun at Kansas, and he may be he, you know, he may be on some boards. <laughs> um, but I'm telling you, man, that kid's a good player, man. He is good. He's athletic. He's tough. He rebounds as a guard. He can make big shots. He really understands how to play, and he's been coached really well by Bill Self. Uh, I would go Christian Braun. So we had uh, we had Ryan Daly on here from St. Joe's who played against Kansas at that uh, the event in Fort Myers last year. And he said that he was going up against Christian Brown and Christian hit four threes on him in a row in the first half. And he said he started talking shit to him the rest of the half, but he couldn't understand him because he had such a country accent. So he's sitting there and he's just jabbering at him. He's like, what are you, what are you, what are you saying here, man? I, I, I don't get it. Oh, man, Christian Brown was mine. Um, I'll go with, uh, oh, I don't know. This is tough now. Uh, you know what I'll do? I'll go with Colin Gillespie. I think that Colin Gillespie is the kind of guy where um, I think I think Villanova can get to a Final Four. If things break right for him. I think Colin Gillespie is the kind of guy that can turn himself into that quintessential backup point guard, Fred Van Vliet, TJ McConnell kind of a guy. Um, it's just, I mean, he's so smart. He's so heady. He gets done. Is that crazy? You guys think he can play in the NBA? I, I do. I do. I mean, man, winner. see. He wins. I think man. he's a winner. I think he's he a winner. Wins. I think he's tough. I think he's a winner. He got good size and he can shoot it. And there's a role. It's kind of like what we talked about with Alondis. I think there's a role for a guy like that, a bigger guard, athletic. You can't speed him up. Secondary ball handler, you know, that allows you to play with a bigger, you know, with a bigger lineup in your in your in your second. And especially now, you got two way contracts where you can set them right. up, down, work with them. I, I think yep. it really opens the yep. doors for guys like Colin Gillespie to get in there. Yep.